Hello, welcome to the Canny Country Discovery Center. I'm Kendra. Today, we're going to talk about an utterly awesome animal, bats. Just the idea of bats elicits an emotional response in most people, and sadly, for a lot of people, that emotional response is some variation of fear. I'm here to show you that bats, like all wild animals, should be treated with caution. They are magnificent, wonderful creatures and nothing to be scared of and are in fact an important part of our world. Most people know that bats are the only mammal capable of powered flight. All other flying mammals only glide. And this makes bats unique. So unique in fact that they've been put into their own scientific family, the Chiroptera. Isn't that a great word? Chiroptera means hand wing in Greek. And a bat's wing is in fact made up of strong flaps of skin stretched between its fingers and arm. Just like us, bats have four fingers and a thumb. And just like us, even better than us, bats can move each finger independently. This gives bats amazing control when they fly, and their skills rival that of birds. A bat can hover, roll, stoop, dive, and fly backwards as needed. Add in the fact that most bats have claws on their thumbs and toes, and a bat can climb anywhere it can't fly, which means a bat can get just about anywhere it wants to. Isn't that cool? There are over 1,000 species of bats in the world, second only to rodents in the number of species, and they comprise almost 25% of all mammal species. The world's largest bat is the golden-crowned flying fox. It lives in Indonesia and has a body length of 11 inches and a wingspan of up to five and a half feet. For scale, my wingspan, fingertip to fingertip, is five feet. On the other end is the world's smallest bat, Kitty's hognose bat, also known as the bumblebee bat. The bumblebee bat lives in Thailand and has a body length of one inch and a wingspan of six inches. These two extremes highlight the two major groups of bats, the large, generally fruit-eating megachiroptera and the small, generally insect-eating microchiroptera. All of the bats in North America are microchiroptera. There are 45 species of bats native to the United States, 18 of which have been spotted here in Utah. Here in Canyon Country, we have quite a few bats. You may see big brown bats, little brown bats, Spotted bats, Alan's big eared bat, or pallid bats flying around. Most people also know that bats use echolocation to find prey at night. How this works is a bat will send out a high frequency sound through its nose or its mouth, and this sound will travel out from the bat, bounce off an object, and come back to the bat. A bat's ears are so sensitive that it can tell the minute differences between when that pulse of sound will return to each ear. This helps a bat figure out what direction the object is in, how far away it is, and how big it is. However, even with echolocation, a lot of bats actually have fairly decent eyesight, laying the saying, blind as a bat, to rest. Now, let time to lay another myth to rest. Bats can indeed contract rabies. However, they are no more likely to be carriers of rabies than any other vector mammal. In fact, deer have about the same incidence of rabies as bats. With that being said though, if you find a bat on the ground, leave it be. You may have only the best intentions, but a scared bat can't tell the difference between a helping hand and a predator. In fact, if you want to help these wonderful, interesting creatures, the best thing you can do is protect where they live. 
Bats can live in snags, under, under eaves of houses, in rock faces, just about anywhere. And a single bat can eat up to 3,000 insects in a night. So even if you don't think you like bats, you secretly do. Can you imagine the number of gnats and mosquitoes that would be around without bats? Thus, if you find a colony of bats, leave them be, please. If you disturb a hibernating bat, that could be a death sentence for that, for that bat, as it uses up valuable fat stores to fly away from you, which could result in it starving before spring comes around. Also, bat populations across the United States are in decline thanks to a disease called white nose syndrome caused by a fungus. It's unclear how exactly this kills the bats, but it looks like this fungus depletes fat stores and causes dehydration. It's thought that this fungus is being spread about by going around on people's boots between different caves and other areas where bats live. Thus, I beg of you, if you go to any location where there are bats, after you leave, just spray your boots down with some disinfectant, easy peasy, and you'll be saving a bat. That brings me to another favor I have to ask of all y'all. Does everyone know who Batman is? I'm not even a big superhero fan, and I know who Batman is. And I have to say, the creators of Batman missed out on some really cool abilities or skills he could have. Wouldn't it be awesome if he could use echolocation? But my main point is that Batman sometimes works with a partner named Batgirl. Now, Batgirl annoys me. Not only is she missing out on some really cool skills, but also her name, in my opinion, is kind of lame. So I ask, if any of you ever create a female bat-themed superhero, I ask that you name her Chiroptera, which is a much cooler name. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you guys learned a lot, and hopefully we'll see you guys here soon. Bye.